Matson is about the culture. The thing that makes Matson different from every other ocean transportation company in the world is that culture of aloha and culture of Hawaii. To me, when you think about Matson, that's, that's what it is. It's the heritage and the history of coming to these beautiful remote islands and how buildings like the Royal Hawaiian and, and the Aloha Tower still stand today to remind us of that. This is a company that has been underappreciated by history. They contributed to the economic success of tourism. They contributed to the winning of the war in the Pacific. And in the post-war, the rebuilding of Hawaii. For the long-lasting contributions that Matson has made to Hawaii, the historic Hawaii Foundation is proud to honor Matson as the 2018 Kama'aina of the Year. Without Captain Matson and his vision, and without the growth of the company after his death, we wouldn't be where we are today. Captain William Matson was a Swedish immigrant who started a service in 1882 from San Francisco to Hilo, Hawaii. And he got that idea because he met Klaus Spreckels, who was in the sugar industry. Captain Matson's first job was sailing as a captain on a private yacht in San Francisco Bay for Spreckels. And Klaus said, you know, I've got to get this sugar back and forth. Mr. Matson understood that and he saw, wait a second, I can bring goods back and forth. And he began to do that. He was carrying about 300 tons of plantation supplies to Hilo and returned with about 300 tons of sugar. And so the beginning of this shipping industry that will dominate for over a century is brought about by two men who are friends and have a common understanding of opportunity. Captain Matson's original goal was to provide fast and reliable service from the mainland to the kingdom and then territory and then state of Hawaii. It was always how do we get there the fastest. Up until the late 1920s, the trip to Hawaii was a slow and often rough trip across the ocean. So with these new ships that the Matson line built in the 1920s and 30s, suddenly the trip to Hawaii became one of comfort and glamour and romance. People that were traveling were very rich. They had done well in the stock market and now they were living in a, at a time of, of opulence and money. Mass Navigation recognized that. They decided to build the Malolo, the grandest, finest ship. This was the most lavish and best way to come to Hawaii. It will continue through the 1950s and 1960s. Boat Day was the highlight of the voyage for most people. It was something that Matson created for the ships as they arrived in Honolulu Harbor. I remember my mother telling me the joy of coming here on the Lurling. And she watched these young boys jumping in the water to collect coins. And she thought it was just great. And there was lots of flowers. She had never seen a lay before. As that ship moved towards its area of dock, we were already dancing on the docks. The Royal Hawaiian Band just opened up into music. And there were moments that I stood right beside Hilo Hattie. The most beautiful smile that you could ever imagine was there. I remember my mother talking about that experience and the excitement of the ships coming to Hawaii and what a big thing it was for people every time a ship arrived. It's hard to imagine what that meant at that time today because we take so much for granted. I think that was part of what made the white ships so special, being so remote here in Hawaii. They were so important socially and culturally and to the economy and politically. The Royal Hawaiian opened on February 1st, 1927. The Royal Hawaiian rose from these grounds because of mass navigation. The vision they had was to provide accommodations for very well-heeled travelers. 
because it took so long to travel across the oceans to get here. This hotel was built by design so that majority of the rooms were facing the garden, an oasis of green that gave them that sense of comfort. Many halal would be here that would dance to the beautiful music of the ukulele players, the steel guitar players. So you learned how to play the ukulele. You learned how to enjoy the foods of Hawaii. That culture was here as the royal rose. This connection between the history of Hawaii and the culture and the music and the art and hula and things like that, Matson played a significant role in keeping that alive. At the peak of the popularity of the white ships in the, the late 1930s, World War II started. I think that the war years was a real test for the company. When Pearl Harbor was attacked, all of Matson's ships, their passenger ships and their freighters, were commissioned for use in the military. The beautiful white liners are now painted gray. They're stripped of their state rooms. They have to make as much room they can for troops. They will bring well over 375,000 troops to the island of Oahu. Not only that, all the military goods. They bring munitions. I mean, these famed liners are now carrying shells. At one point during World War II, on behalf of the War Department, Matson operated something like 600 vessels. I can't think of any other company in the United States that played more of a critical role in supplying forces and supplies. They were going to lose 11 freighters, and they were going to lose four Liberty ships. The men that served on those ships, that died on those ships, were part of the Matson family. So there was a cost. We have three and four generations of Matson employees that work at Matson. We similarly serve many generations of customers. We need ships to carry out our business, but it's those relationships that we think make us different. My father, who is our company founder, had a really close relationship with Matson from the beginning. Our team tells me stories that they could call Matson as long as they said Sully told me to call, they could get whatever they wanted. And, you know, he knew he wasn't Matson's biggest customer, but he felt like he was because he was taken care of. And if he needed something, the Matson team was there to support him. And really, in the grocery business as we're in, we wouldn't have been able to grow and deliver to our customers in the way we have been able to without Matson. So you think about bathroom tissue, you think about rice, you think about turkeys at Thanksgiving. Most of the meat we have in our stores is all coming from elsewhere. And so it'd be a really different grocery shopping experience without Matson, that's for sure. As one of the founding members of the industry here, we needed to create an entire workforce in support of the transportation industry and whether that was stevedores who were loading or unloading the cargo, mariners who rode aboard the ships, ship clerks, salespeople, people in the cashier's office, insurance department, the finance department, we created an entire industry and you don't have to go very far in Hawaii before you recognize someone or someone knows someone, a family member, someone down the street, a neighbor, or somebody at your church uh, that is connected to Matson, and we're quite proud of that legacy. For us, it's also a sense of responsibility to the community. We have an active giving program. Last year, we contributed to over 800 different organizations throughout the Matson network, including close to 500 in Hawaii. Some of those are specifically focused at preserving and enhancing the Hawaiian culture. So while we don't have Matson's white ships coming to Hawaii anymore, they did leave such an important legacy by bringing tourists here and developing the industry which supports the island's economy today. And we see the legacy still all over, especially in Honolulu with the Royal Hawaiian and the hotels that they built in the 50s, and the Aloha Tower, and the Natatorium, and the Waialai Golf Course, all these things that came about because of Matson's passenger ship era. Matson has a long legacy, which we're very proud of, in introducing technologies that support the state's economy.
The ships that we have under construction now will be the biggest ships ever built in the United States. They're specifically designed for the operation between the U.S. West Coast and Hawaii. They're fast. They'll be able to burn LNG, liquefied natural gas, to minimize our environmental impact. We're in the process of renewing our terminal here on Sand Island, which is our hub and our network here. So there's a billion dollars of investments going back into new ships and into the island, which we're super excited about, which will allow us to continue to provide excellent service, we think, over many decades to come. I would think that Captain Matson would be delighted to know that out of his humble origin, we've created the modern Matson today. So it's a, it's a neat story.